Uh, so this is part of our What If series, and it stays with me from the Autism Canada. You did a webinar the other day, which we'll link here for so that people can watch it. It, it honestly, folks, if you love um, things with Stuart, this is an important one to watch. It's it's different, and you've approached, I liked it. It was it was really enter and entertaining and engaging, um, but there's some new content in there, and there was something that you shared that I'd like to start with, and then we'll get into the what if component of it. That kind of stayed with me because you were talking about how, um, you know, if we think that um, that there aren't more stresses, stressors, stress on, on children and youth today, that uh, I think the fellow asked you actually, was that true or was that a myth yeah. that it's just the same old, same old? And, yeah. and you started to talk about uh, why that really is true. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned about uh, th this, this topic about chewing and how that's changed. Can you share with us what that was? So this is work that goes back um, uh, a long time now. It started with a, a buddy, an old buddy of mine called Mel Connor. And then uh, Dan Lieberman brought out this book. It's about two years ago. And if you can find the links for that, I forget okay. what it's called. But basically what they've shown is they studied our teeth very carefully and they studied the teeth of our ancestors. And what they uh, figured out was that we have these large flat molars that were designed for chewing. And what Lieberman looked at was how much time we spent, we would have spent chewing. And it turns out um, our early diet, we were probably eating tubers uh, mm -hmm. and they're very um, fibrous. And so we would spend a long time chewing, but it turns out that the very act of chewing secretes serotonin. Mm -hmm. um, and so we get all of the, so chewing itself is a self-regulatory action. But uh, we have a generation now, and you can see this in Kessler's book, The uh, End of Overeating, where uh, we have a generation of kids who don't chew anymore. And all these foods that are essentially pre-chewed foods. So chicken nuggets are pre-chewed chicken, uh, probably with not very much chicken in them. <laughs> you saw that article oh. yesterday. Anyways, the point is <laughs> that, um, you know, it's, it's an aspect of mismatch theory all over again, right? this point that, um, you know, something that we take so for granted does in fact reflect a huge change from our, the system that was designed for us in the Pleistocene. Very interesting stuff. And so it just jumped out at me about how it's almost like the domino effect, or I think that's oversimplifying yeah. it, making it sound more linear than it is, but how something like that has all, is it's affecting serotonin. So that means it's affecting the brain, which means if in yes. turn it's affecting the body so my what if which i think is probably not um, overly original if you were to ask occupational therapists what they would love to see happen in schools and there's that you know there's lots of talk about what we should do in the er in the earlier years in terms of um, uh, from an ot sort of perspective but my what if here is wondering if what what if in the k to three years um, we built in <laughs> we built in more time on working on... To chew? Not, not just to <laughs> chew, but it's thinking about, instead of trying to, like we still go back to this trying to change behaviors, right? And so what if we, as part of not just specialized program, but, but part of our, our everyday classroom built in more time to, you know, roll down hills and to, you know, some of these things that are happening in forest schools and some of these, uh, you know, more that are, it's not trying to go flashback into time about how things were in the past, and yet it actually in a way is experiencing some of things that were pre-technology, pre-21st century, yep. as part of the everyday. So really what I'm hearing is what if we had everyone read as much as they could about self-reg? <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> and make space for it in the everyday classroom yep. and not, and, and to consider, and I mean I'm interested in it as a researcher yeah. as well, trying to think about not the direct link between be you know if yeah. we spend time eating food that requires us to you know to chew more and those sorts of things or to more rolling down the hills but looking at it at a distance and and looking at the differences that that would make for you know for learning for mood for behavior you know uh, when i look at this you i was driving you crazy with this about <laughs> uh, six months ago but when i look at some of the things that are happening today um these are our, you know i mean we are living in difficult times and these are all signs of massive dysregulation. And it's massive dysregulation that's, that's the key here. 
It's not the crazy things that are happening, say politically, mm -hmm. it's the dysregulation that led to this point. Mm -hmm. And what if we started to recognize, reframe things that are happening as signs of excessive stress and then figure out, you know, why do we have these stresses? What are the things that we have to learn from, you know, Gluckman or from Lieberman about, uh, you know, uh, how we were designed and what are the insights we get from this about the hidden stressors that are proliferating today and what we can do about it. Turns out, by the way, I've worked in schools. I'll never forget this one school in, this was in Smithers. And they had one of these, uh, um, they had a wheelchair ramp uh, with little ridges going down for the, so the kids' uh, chairs mm -hmm. were slowed down. And what they learned was that one of the kids, all of the kids' favorite activity was rolled down. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really? serious, yeah. And they said, it's just magic. You know, we didn't have to go out and buy anything. We just had to give them some time so they could go roll. Is that, that's the hallway. Yeah. Have I you love seen that. It? I, there's a video, I'll see if I can find it to link towards it, but it's, it, I think I've mentioned this before in presentations, but it's just a hallway, so imagine you're yeah, walking to hallway. your gym, right, and you have just a slight ramp going down to a lower level. Like, there are schools yeah. that have that, you could build yeah. it, and they give them the opportunity them to the roll. They don't make everybody roll, don't do that, because not everybody needs to roll or want to roll, and, <laughs> but some, the ones who want to, they roll as they go down this this ramp, right? Yeah. So it was uh, Lake Catholic. Yeah, Lake Catholic. I, I almost went to work there. Do you remember? I was trying to work there. <laughs> wonderful school, yeah. wonderful principal. Yeah. He, he he came uh, to one of my early things. Yeah. And, and a wonderful superintendent, my buddy Chris Vandermark. <laughs> so on that note, we'll leave you there. There's another what if.